Whew. So, it is 9 o'clock on a Sunday night. We're less than 24 hours since I got back from Nashville, and it hasn't stopped when it comes to Mississippi State uh, basketball and baseball news um, since I got back. You know, we had the tournament, the, the SEC tournament, um, got just got back from that Saturday night, woke up the next morning, went to church, went to the series, Mississippi State and uh, LSU finishing out the uh, baseball series, and then immediately had to go over to the men's basketball selection show and then over to the women's basketball selection show. It's 9 o'clock, um, but there's been – so many people that have been reaching out that want to hear uh, the thoughts of uh, Brian Haydad and myself on Thunder and Lightning. Since you're not going to get a Thunder and Lightning this week at any point due to the fact that Brian's on vacation, I got to give you something. We have to give you a semblance of something, even if Brian's not involved. So we're going to talk about Mississippi State sports here. And I, I'm also going to try to do a uh, live Talking Dogs on Monday night. There's been several people that want, that want that as well, so we will try to come back on Monday as well and um, do that on this YouTube channel. But let's talk some sports. Let's go ahead and get right into it. What a uh, last two or three days, three days, I guess, for Mississippi State sports. We talked about the science. You guys know all about the science if you've been keeping up with me on uh, social media. This is something that I just like made up as a as a fun gimmick a few weeks ago. Mississippi State cannot win or hadn't won, um, you know, on the same day uh, in two different sports. Um, at least in like the big sports like baseball and basketball, or a team, uh, you know, one MSU team struggles to win while the other one does win, and it was just kind of comical at a time. But then it got to be kind of real. You know, the Mississippi State women's team went on a bit of a run. They had five straight wins, six straight wins, I think it was. And then the men's team was losing. Well, all of a sudden, the men team, men's team starts winning. The women's team lost six of the last seven. And the baseball team went on a nine-game winning streak. And the men's team lost five straight. It was really kind of crazy. And it became a thing. I even talked to people in the Mississippi State Athletic Department that – we're talking about it, talking through scenarios like, well, what if what if this happens? What I mean, it was crazy, and all of that hopefully finally got put away on Friday afternoon, Friday evening, when Mississippi State had one of the biggest days for uh, athletics in two different sports in the history of the school. They beat number five Tennessee in the SEC tournament in the quarterfinals and then turned around and beat the number two team in the country in LSU in baseball. The science, hopefully, has finally been defeated. Or at least in this case, maybe it's been altered. Maybe the science is now moving into a different direction. We'll, 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 look, we'll look at the data and see what that is all about. But the basketball team obviously had their run come to an end in Nashville, and I gave my thoughts on that in a reaction video that you guys can go look at here on the Maroon and White Daily YouTube channel. And, and I do want to remind you guys to please go subscribe to the channel. We're starting to pick up the numbers a little bit, uh, producing some good con content on here. And I think the numbers are growing a little bit. We had to move um, all of our stuff from my personal account over to the Maroon and White Daily YouTube account since I came over to On3. And uh, it's just going to take some time to, to build. We really built that YouTube channel of, of mine up to a nice number. And uh, I think we we worked really hard on that, and I'm hoping this can eventually get to where we were on there. So if you guys don't mind helping me out, maybe even sharing it, I'd really appreciate it. Um, but I do appreciate those that are watching this video, sharing this video, subscribing to the YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. Uh, but you can go look at that reaction video. And then from the other uh, two games, too, I have reaction videos if you guys would like to hear my thoughts on those ball games. Also, but State had their run come to an end against the eventual SEC tournament champs in Auburn, which when you think about it, the fact that Mississippi State played Auburn as well as it did on day three of the tournament, um, Auburn, I thought, played pretty well in the game too, and State lost that ballgame 73-66, to and it was really closer than the final score. They were within three points there in the final minute, but uh, Auburn was able to win that and then eventually beat Florida I thought it was a great tournament run for Mississippi State. Turned out to be a very important one because they're selected uh, as an eight seed in the NCAA tournament. 
and uh, taking on Michigan State in the first round. We found that out on Sunday night. That game coming up Thursday, it's going to tip off the tournament, folks. Not not counting the first four games or whatever, the play-in games. This is going to be an 11-15 central tip-off on CBS. All eyes are going to be on this MSU versus MSU matchup. So um, really excited about this. We will be in Charlotte to cover that. So uh, full coverage coming your way beginning on thir uh, Wednesday when we get to go check out practice at the arena. Uh, Spectrum Center or Spectrum Arena, I think is what it's called. Uh, so we'll have full coverage there. I'll have another video and some stories as well for you guys. But Mississippi State matched up with Michigan State and also the number one seed, North Carolina, in Charlotte. So expect that to be a, uh, a very biased crowd, to say the least, over in Charlotte, North Carolina. But it's going, going to be a really fun matchup there with Michigan State and, and Mississippi State going up against a legend in Tom Izzo, one of the best coaches in the history of college basketball. And uh, the Bulldogs have a chance with two wins there to go to Los Angeles and potentially play maybe even Alabama, who's the four seed in the same region. So it, it's going to be um, it's going to be madness. There's no doubt about it. I, I had my hopes on uh, Memphis and Indianapolis, but I like Charlotte too. It's driving distance. Not a bad drive. If you guys have ever been to Charlotte, it's a nice city. Uh, it's a very easy drive to make. So I encourage you to go check this out because you truly never know. Um, you know, how many times you're going to be able to see your team play in the NCAA tournament, and that one should be fun. But just was is really cool to see, um, you know, Mississippi State and this team comfortably getting getting into the tournament and, you know, the relief on the on the team's faces and Chris Jans' faces. Because Chris Jans was still, uh, was you know, he was optimistic about them making the tournament, but he was very cautious about it all. And, um, you know, it was cool to see them – you know, get that off their back. It's it's always uh, a blessing for a team to make the NCAA tournament. You, you never take those for granted, especially when you play in the SEC and you play the schedule that Mississippi State's played this year. And talking to Chris Jans, you know, that he really believes that this schedule has prepared them in the SEC tournament as well for a run in March. And this is a team that last week has shown it's playing some good basketball. They lost five straight games, or four straight games, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and went into the SEC tournament really needing to win. And I, I think that now that I look at it and kind of look at where Mississippi State falls, I think they were going to be borderline making the tournament and had they lost in that first round to LSU. But the LSU win appears to have gotten them in securely. Uh, if they would have lost to Tennessee, I don't think that would have hindered them to the point where they're out of the tournament. Maybe they would have been a play-in game you know, as a, a 10 or 11, but I think they would have been in the tournament. Uh, the win against Tennessee firmly put them in. I mean, they were an eight seed. They weren't even a nine seed. Uh, they were they were an eight. You you beat Auburn, you might be pushing for that seven seed at that point. So um, Bulldogs firmly in, uh, big time uh, matchup too. I, th I think that's a winnable game against Michigan State. This is not the Michigan State of old. Uh, that's a game that they can win, but – um, it's going to be tough. Every game in the NCAA tournament is tough. It's your last, potentially your last game. Uh, you play one bad game and you're done. And for Mississippi State, this is a team that is, to me, is dangerous enough in what they do defensively when they're playing great defense. And they've been off and on, but the numbers suggest this is a really good defensive team, top 25 defensive team nationally. When they're playing their best defense, they're an elite team defensively. Uh, it's just about you know being consistent there on the defensive side of the ball, and now they're they've shown the ability to score with different pieces as well. But they need everybody on in the tournament. Tolu Smith's got to be back to 100 um, percent and playing well. They need Josh Hubbard to to you know be one of those media darlings, one of those guys that really sets the world on fire in the tournament, and he's capable of doing that. But they need Rams Davis. They need Shaq Moore. They need even Keyshawn Murphy off the bench. Jimmy Bell. They need these guys to, to really have big tournaments to make a run here, and I think they're capable of doing that. So uh, really big for Mississippi State to make the tournament. Two years in a row, Chris Jans, the first coach in Mississippi State history to lead two straight teams to the NCAA tournament to start his career here. So he's doing some special things here at Mississippi State, and they'll have a chance to win their first tournament game, I think, since 2008. 
um, coming up this week, Thursday morning, 11-15. Uh, real quickly, the women did not make the tournament. Um, not a big surprise. If you've um, kind of followed my stuff, I just did not expect them to make the tournament, and they didn't. Um, but they did change their mind. I reported a couple of weeks ago that State was not planning on taking a WBIT. It's now called the WBIT. It's the secondary tournament, the Women's Basketball Invitation Tournament. Um, they were not initially planning on that, but the team voted they want to play. So they are playing it. They're a two seed. Uh, and basically this is set up based off of who didn't make the tournament, and they select teams through metrics and things like that. Mississippi State, it appears, at least by that, was at best the fifth team out of the tournament. So they weren't even really that close to making it. Had they you know, won a couple of games in the last six losses and seven games, then maybe they could have, but they, they, they put themselves in this position. The Bulldogs just played terribly down the stretch, and they lost six out of seven games, and it, they have only themselves to blame here. But the players did want to play this. They wanted to continue to play and improve themselves here in the postseason. They will be able to host at least the first two rounds. They will host uh, on Thursday night. I do not have that information just yet. I apologize. I haven't seen it yet. I just left the, um, the hump. Uh, but you know, we'll look and see if, if any of that information is out. As of right now, it doesn't look like uh, we have anything yet, but I'll keep you updated on that. It's going to be on Thursday night, though, uh, I believe. So if you're interested in that, those tickets are going to be available. You can go to the the hump. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, Georgia Tech uh, and Mississippi State will be playing in the first round in that tournament. WBIT. So now moving on to baseball and what a weekend it was for Mississippi State baseball. Hosting number two LSU. And um, I think a lot of people wanted me to do this and wanted me, Brian and I to, to do a podcast just to like needle us about being negative about this team. But Here's the deal, folks. I, I don't know if people fully grasp this, but we don't get upset when Mississippi State is doing well in sports. We don't. I mean, that's not that's good for our business, first and foremost. And secondly, both of us grew up Mississippi State fans. I can I can be objective and I can report things objectively. Doesn't bother me at all. I can report things good and bad. I don't care. Uh, but deep down inside, I would prefer for Mississippi State to be good at sports. That, not even deep down inside. I think it's pretty obvious, uh, if you know me, that I want Mississippi State to win. Mississippi State beating LSU is not hurting my feelings at all. I am, I'm thrilled about it. I, I'm, I'm pumped that Mississippi State did this. So if, if you logged in and if you're online and you're, you're thinking you're digging into me for Mississippi State winning – Buddy, I'm right there with you. I, I'm laughing at everybody else. I, I mean, it doesn't bother me at all. What we saw this weekend from Mississippi State, you want my thoughts on it? I'll give you my thoughts. What we saw from Mississippi State is what we've been clamoring for for the last two years. This is exactly what we've been saying we need to see from Mississippi State. You can call us uh, morons, what we said was stupid or whatever. Mississippi State has not been doing what they did this weekend. And I'm not even talking about – I'm not really talking yet about the offense or pitching or defense. Um, I'm talking about how Mississippi State carried itself. And if you watched any of the games, which I hate I missed the first two. I was in Nashville, but uh, I was there for game three. This Mississippi State team finally played with an edge. They played like a team that was not going to be punked on its home field. And we've been asking for that for the last two years. We've been wanting to see Mississippi State come out. And if a team starts chirping in the dugout, you chirp back. Somebody says something to you, you turn around and tell them to shut up. And that's what they did. Dakota Jordan did it. 
Johnny Long did it. We I, I asked Chris Lamonis after the game about Johnny Long, kind of what he brings to the table. And uh he straight up called him a uh, four letter word head uh and talked about just kind of the type of guy he is. And he's not gonna take any crap off anybody. He's has um a lot of confidence and his teammates said the same thing post game. I think a guy like Johnny Long has been exactly what Mississippi State has been missing. Somebody that, on top of the fact he's behind the plate, and how many times has Mississippi State had a dude stomp on home plate after a home run or chirp or something like that, and a catcher just let him roll by? Johnny Long's not going to do that. If somebody tries to stomp on home plate, he's going to put a stop to that. He had a few words with the dugout. Um, I think it was either Friday or Saturday. The guy is not going to take crap off anybody, and players like that have been missing from Mississippi State. But this team carries itself differently than the last two. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a Johnny Long or what, but I think a big part of it is you have several players that have come in that haven't been here and that are from different places that are bringing different personalities. And, like, you know, a David Mershon – a uh, Dakota Jordan is is like this too, um, you know Johnny Long. Those guys have come into the program in the last two years, um, and in Johnny Long's case this year, and have brought a different kind of energy, a different type of player, and it's changing the culture back a little bit. I think you're starting to see a Mississippi State team that you know when you play at Duty Noble, it's supposed to be intimidating, it's supposed to be a tough place to play. They made it a tough place to play for LSU. And um, you go back to Friday night, State struggled a little bit at times early in the ball game. Nolan Stevens comes in and I thought was exceptional. That's a freshman that is not like many freshmen out there. He's got a mindset to him that it just doesn't bother him. And he pitched five and two thirds, I think, almost finished out the ball game, was outstanding and he leads leads it to a 10-4 to four win. Um, and also, you saw some big hits from Hunter Hines, who, by the way, is coming out of it here uh, and playing some really good baseball right now for you. Offense was good. Pitching and defense was exceptional after um, the start from Evan Sierra. I thought the pitching was great from Nolan Stevens, and State gets a big win. Game two, I think, exemplified how things are turning for Mississippi State. It feels strange to say that, a 9-8 to eight loss for the Bulldogs. But I talked to a lot of people after this game, and I felt very similar to them, that said that this didn't even feel like a loss. And it's strange. But the way Mississippi State battled back in this, chirped back at LSU, fought. They were down 9-1 to one in this game. It was a terrible start by Cal Steven. Um, and there's just going to be some games where he, he just has a fastball that's a little flat and the secondary stuff's just not hitting right now um, against some of these good offenses, and LSU took advantage of that. But the work by the bullpen was great. It allowed you to stay in the ball game, and you start chipping away. And this team is not – this is a game that State would have lost in seven innings last year. They would have lost 14-1. to one in seven innings, and um, you would have turned around, and Sunday you probably would have done the same thing. This is a game that you lose last year, but instead they fought back, they get in position to even win the game late, and even though they came up short, I think people sensed a little something different with this team, and that showed on Sunday. That carried over to Sunday. They didn't let that game beat them. They carried that eight, seven runs in a row or whatever it was, over to this ball game, and Drangelo Sanja had a, I thought, a great first four innings. Gave up four hits, uh, didn't walk anybody, no runs. State got out to a three nothing lead on three doubles in the first inning. They they really uh, barreled up Thatcher Hurd in the first inning, and then kind of unraveled a little bit on Drangelo. He walked five guys. One of them was intentional, but. I thought he was getting a little squeezed, but he still walked some players, and that that killed him in that. Uh, fifth inning, but what did State do when that happened? They answered, three to three, pushed it back out. They got a uh, a big home run from uh, Dakota Jordan, three run blast, and then they hit a solo home run with Hunter Hines. You're right back up seven to three. 
because of what you did there in the um, in the bottom of that inning after you just gave up three runs. Next inning, LSU gets uh, just a, a tough situation, and um, you know, in hindsight, and really even going into the bat against Tommy White, I didn't think State should face him, and they they especially shouldn't have challenged him the way they did with Cam Schulke, but. Cam Schulke did a really good job battling back. He had a runner on third with no outs, got two strikeouts, and then he's got Tommy White facing him. And Tommy White was behind on, on a couple of pitches. It looked like he was had him off balance. He had two strikes on him, and he challenged him with a fastball in the bread basket, and Tommy White destroyed it, and you just can't do that. Uh, but Schulke came back, got the final out. Um, they get out of the inning 7-5. to five and came right back, scored five runs, and that's the ball game. I mean, State was just absolutely relentless. And we've seen this with Jake Gotro's players over the you know the years that he's been here. They struggle in the early ball games against you know soft toss and left handers and guys that aren't throwing hard. You start to see velocity a little bit, and this team can really get on it. They hunt fastballs, but those two home runs. I saw two people talking about this. Those two home runs that were hit by Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines were not fastballs. Dakota Jordan hit a slider, and he was sitting. I talked to Dakota after the game and asked him about that. He was sitting. He was sitting a, a breaking ball on that hole at bat, and he challenged that. I mean, like he. I think the guy was. I guess it was Thatcher Hurd. Um, thought he was going to swing through it, and he went after it uh, and, and drove it out of the yard in center field. I mean, it was the deepest part of the ballpark, absolutely destroyed it. And then Hunter, I think he might've got a change up on his, but his was absolutely obliterated. It was over the second fence. This team can hit beyond a fastball. It just, sometimes it takes them a while for whatever reason, but this offense is locked in right now. You scored um, 10 runs in game one, eight in game two, and 15 in game three, and you had 10 plus hits in every um, game. So this team is, is playing some really good baseball after week one, and let's see what happens. I mean, you're sitting here now at 15 and six, but you're two and one in the league, and that's the most important thing to look at at this point. Forget the non-conference schedule. Can this team get to 14 SEC wins? I think that, to me, is the benchmark. And if they can get to 14, I think they're going to be in the mix for the postseason. And if you look at the schedule, you get the 14 SEC wins. You've done a pretty dang good job. You got Texas A&M and College Station this weekend, top 10 team. Florida next weekend, top 10 team. Uh, Georgia in Starkville, that is a very winnable ser series. They got uh, they got swept by Kentucky, I believe. Ole Miss in Oxford, that's a better Ole Miss team. That's going to be tough. Uh, Auburn in Starkville, winnable series. Vanderbilt in Nashville, very difficult. That I mean, that's probably going to be the fourth top 10 team you play. Alabama looks much better. That's a top potential top 20 team. Um, Arkansas and Fayetteville, very likely could be a top 10 team there as well. And then Missouri. At home. I mean, getting uh, 12 more SEC wins is going to be a challenge. But this team shows that they can compete. And I think we saw something – this weekend that should change a lot of opinions on this team. It changes mine a little bit. I want to see it extended a little more. But um, the thing about me is I will – my my thoughts will change by what I'm seeing on the field. And if this team is, is playing winning baseball, I'm going to talk about the winning baseball. If they're struggling, I'm going to talk about the struggles. That's just how I am. And uh, I think that this, this weekend – there is not a whole lot of negative that I'm going to take away from it. I thought it was um, just hard-nosed baseball. It might not have been perfect. You didn't pitch it exceptionally well, but this is a lineup that I think is going to hit over time with LSU. You did defend it really well. I thought State played really good defense, and that was a big reason why they won this thing. And then you hit – uh, really, really well. So if you put this kind of weekend together every SEC weekend, you're going to have a shot to win all of them. And that's including coming up this uh, next week with, with A&M in Florida. And A&M is a team that 
um, has been playing as good as anybody in the league. So State's going to be challenged out the gates. I thought this team uh, th getting three wins on these first three weekends, uh, winning three total would be a win when you look at it. But if you can find a way to win a couple more here and get out of this thing with, with four or five SEC wins, then you're talking about something. You're talking about a team that could get right back on track. And I, I'm pulling for them. I really am. I, I want this team to win. I want Chris Lamonis to succeed. And um, I would enjoy seeing Chris Lamonis continue to lead, lead this program because I think it this place, I think, matters to him. I think he wants to win badly. And uh, I think it's it's been difficult for him to go through this stretch. I'm pulling for him to find a way out. So we'll see if he's able to do that. Um, I'll have some more thoughts for you guys on Monday night. I, I think we should be good as far as a talking dogs live goes. So uh, I'll be uh, I'll be sure to keep you get, keep you uh, keep you guys updated on Twitter, and then we'll be off to uh, Charlotte on Tuesday. It's going to be another tiring week, but it's going to be fun. I'm excited. This, the me being tired and some of my uh, media cohort cohorts being tired means that Mississippi State is uh, doing a lot of good things right now. So we'll we'll see if they're able to keep keep it up. All right, guys, appreciate you. Uh, thanks for entertaining me and my late night thoughts. We'll be back on Monday night. Hope to catch you there. Hope to catch you down the road.